I was waiting for my train from Mirzapur to Delhi in the middle of the night. Some of you might be knowing that there is a train called Magad Express that comes, it leaves sometime in the middle of the night and reaches in Delhi in the morning. So it was dark, first week of uh, December 1987. No, sorry, 1988. It was 1988. So, I was sitting in joy and accomplishment. And when the train arrived, it touched the platform, I was running to, to find a, uh, a seat. At least 40 to 50 boys, barefooted, half naked, shivering in cold, got down and two men were bringing them like that and I can easily, I could easily understand that they came for for carpet industry because that was the industry there and uh, that was very common thing that the children were brought like this in that train and other train from South Bihar. I started questioning and they started fighting with me. My, I missed my train. Suddenly, the two policemen came from railway police. And this is a small station, 25, 30 years ago. It was even tiny, 30 years ago. So, one of them shook hand with one of those traffickers. Another one started shouting on me that, who are you? Are you Prime Minister of India? What are you doing? Why, what? Why are you creating law and order situation and nuisance here at this station? I said, no, sir, these people are traffickers. They are taking children away to work in carpet industry. Then he said, okay. He caught my hand. He took me to a small, uh, this cage-like uh, railway police jockey, a small police post, which is situated in most of the stations. You might remember if you come from Mirza or somewhere, you visit in the corner there is so I was locked there inside in the middle of the night, one o'clock, early morning. And I was shivering. It was a dirty place, very filthy. That was the place one has to go to urinate and <coughs> or let in. I was sitting in the boat the whole night and I was very angry. But sometime until early morning, my anger was converted into some idea. I thought that instead of going for a hunger fast tomorrow morning or writing letters or making complaints to the higher officers, better to do something. I recalled when I traveled to Germany in the past that there were small stores which sell uh, banana, tobacco, tomato, uh, tomatoes, uh, apples with some kind of uh, sticker, a bio food or what they call, uh, what they call bio food? Organic. organic food, organic food. So this is guarantee written in German language, organic food. So I started thinking if these Germans are so clever, they can evolve the strategy to put the bio or the organic food sticker on a small banana. Why can't a sticker be put on the carpet to ensure that these drugs are free of child labor? So in the morning, I, I was waiting for my rescue and there was another guy, the third policeman, he came, he opened the law and he started shouting on me that, what are you doing here? I said, your colleague has brought me here in the night. He said, there is nothing written on the paper, so you can leave. So I left, thanking God, and I wanted to come back to Delhi as soon as possible. So I reached Delhi, I took a train in the morning, and, then, and I, instead of going home, I made a call, had to call, to a friend of mine in an organization called Bread for the World. This is a German organization who used to support us in freeing children. So this friend, he has become a lifelong friend and 
my brother, Rainer Kruse. So I called Rainer and I said that, I, I narrated the whole story and I said that Germany is the biggest buyer of Indian carpets. Through Hamburg port, they are distributed to the rest of the Europe. I didn't know much about United States at that time, but I knew about Germany. The uh, hub industries relation. So he said, what can we do? We can give you more money. I said, no, I don't want money. I wanted to create a different kind of partnership with Bread for the World. I wanted to launch a campaign in Germany to educate the consumers that they should demand a child labor free carpet. But bigger dilemma and my bigger inner struggle was that I was not against industry. I did not want to harm the industry, though I have been blamed and charged for these kind of things, even in US Senate and congressional hearings. I was blamed like that. In Pakistan, they said that I am a uh, raw agent and destroying Pakistani industry and Indian parliament. They said that they should impo impound my passport because I'm destroying Indian industry and so on. That was a long history. Some of you might be knowing. But I thought that let us, uh, let us go for a consumer's campaign that is more positive campaign, that is more constructive campaign with this labeling idea. So that it could be somewhat positive discrimination, but it could be a good choice for the consumers, a clean choice for the ex industry, exporters, importers, both dealers. So he said, no, it is not possible. We are charity organization, church charity, and we have never done it. Such a campaign has never happened in the world, never in the history. So I said, okay, but I will keep on writing. I kept on writing to their board members and finally they agreed to such a campaign. So I was invited in Germany to launch a campaign to educate the consumers. But I was not sure that how we are going to introduce this labeling system. There was no, no, nothing in the world to learn from. About any human rights issue, forget about child labor issue. That was the first initiative. If I were for complete boycott of Indian carpet, that could have been easier task, easier call. But it did not reach to any conclusion. Today we were not sitting here, we are not celebrating 25th year of Pragmar or Good Weave if I was calling only for boycott. Because boycott does not solve any purpose. You cannot continue it by considering everyone your enemy in the industry. I was hoping that there are, there are good people who can support. Why can't we put everyone in one basket? So finally, I was invited and then the last story I will tell you that has given the birth to this idea more concretely. That was 10th of uh, May, 1990. I was invited to speak uh, in an interview that was live interview on ARD channel number one in Germany. And I told all the stories of children whom I free and my struggle to educate them and rehabilitate them and my fight with the government to change laws and to ensure their rehabilitation and education, all kinds of things. And my appeal to German consumers and European consumers. Suddenly, and that was live interview, so anybody can call and I have to answer. So an old lady called up and said, my son, that was her word, my son, I saved money to buy the most beautiful carpet and the last carpet of my life that I bought only a few weeks ago. And today, listening to you, you are not talking about an academic research, you are talking out of your heart. I could feel it, she said. I could see your face, she said, on television. And I know that you are truthful. I am going to throw this carpet right away, <coughs> outside my house. But tell me whether I will be able to buy another rug 
which could be guaranteed that it is not made by children, by child labor. I was moved, but I had some confidence in myself and I said, yes, <laughs> my dear mother, I promise you that you will have such a carpet in your life. I made this promise publicly on the national television channel online. But my friends in Bradford, the world was so angry, they scolded me, they threatened me that what are you doing? Did we have a longer conversation about it or how are you going to, to make an announcement that we are going to, to launch a monitoring system and finally a labeling system? I said, I made it, it could be mistaken, but let us find out and I will work hard for that. So while I was coming back, I heard about the Swiss control system, SGS in, 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 uh, in Switzerland. So I went back to, uh, to, uh, uh, to Zurich and Geneva to meet those people and learn from them that how we can introduce such a system. They said, no, we have no idea. We can do the quality control, but we cannot be involved in these kind of things. Nobody has done it before. So how, can, how could it be done, these kind of monitorings? And then uh, certification, licensing, labeling, all kinds of things. So I had to come back empty hands. But we were able to build tremendous pressure on the Carpet Export Promotion Council and the All India Carpet Manufacturers Association. Through the consumers campaign as well as through my rescue operations and raids and putting pressure, going to the court, knocking the door of the Supreme Court uh, in connection with the pending case and so many things. So it was not just one thing, consumers campaign, there were multiple strategies, media also. And that has resulted in building pressure on these two major institutions and they invited me for dialogue. So we went for a dialogue with them in the Kalin Bhavan Bhadori. And that was the day when I thought that some positive outcome <coughs> would be there. But one of my friends indicated me when I was sitting on the dais that there was a guy sitting in front of me, just in front of me with his gun. And he was a hardcore criminal who was released on bail just to kill me and this friend of mine was a lawyer and I could not understand what who is doing what is what is, what is that then I, I I went on the dais again and started talking I said that the people are making human cries people are shouting Kela Satyati is Pakistani agent Kela Satyati go back like the Simon Commission go back in the past. So go back, go back. But I was, I was smiling. I said that I just learned that there is a guy just in front of me sitting with his gun, small gun. Because my friend, the lawyer friend, his name, he is no more unfortunately, Bipin Bihari Burma. So Bipin Bihari Burma sent a small slip, said that I know this guy, he is a hardcore criminal. So Kailash, just uh, leave this place. So I said that this is the slip. So I read out that slip. I said that my friend has sent this slip. So you can kill me. I don't know who is this guy, but one of you should be there. Everybody was shocked. Because some people were very genuine, definitely. They were genuine people, but a few of them who wanted to kill me, they had hired a, uh, a sharp suitor. So I said that, okay, you can kill me. But there are three propositions. One is that if you kill me now, then tomorrow onwards there would be huge, huge noise in the entire Europe and United States. Because by that time, I was able to build a very good relationship with Senator Harkin and some more people. Today, we must pay our greatest, greatest respect to my brother and friend, Senator Tom Harkin. We cannot celebrate 25th years without the people like him. We cannot celebrate this without the people like Faris Harvey, who is not here, but I learned that he is well and he is still in the board. So I said that from tomorrow onwards, there would be 
total boycott in America at least and a few more uh, European countries. If you don't kill me, then there are two propositions. If I allow, I would ally, then three things cannot live together. Kalasatyarthi, carpet industry and child labor. One of them has to die. I don't want to kill the carpet industry, but I want to end child labor. And if you really wanted to end child labor, then you and I have to ally. The industry and Kailas Satyarthi has to ally. That was all recorded in the, in the Kalyan Bhavans, uh, the first big meeting of dialogue between me and them. So finally, I was saved by the leaders of the carpet industry inside a small room in the back of the, you can call it green room in the back of the stage. But in the same night, two gentlemen came to meet me in a place where I was staying in a hideout. One was Raidani, R.K. Raidani, who is no more, he passed away, R.K. Carpets or something like that. Another one was Gangadhar Dube, he is still there running some college or something. They were crying in tears. They touched my feet and they said that I have never come across any person in my life who is so passionate for the children who are not his biological children. I have never met someone who does not want to kill the carpet industry but wanted to save the industry from this kind of evil and crime. So we are with you. I said, come on, that's great, that is a good start because their heart, their mind was changed seeing all this drama during the day. So I told them that let us invite like-minded people and we begin with a group called Simical Carpet Manufacturers Association Without Child Labor and that began with 8 people, then 30 people. Then in the meantime, we were able to find a group called Indo-German Carpet Export Promotion Council, IGEP. And the gentleman, because the, the big campaign was already in Germany, so the German government and German organizations uh, contacted this organization in Delhi to work with me on this issue. We had a conversation and then UNICEF in India, then some of the exporters, some of the importers uh, and so many other people came together and the rug mark has been incorporated.